Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be doing another wireless design. This time, it is a point to multi-point wireless design for a port out in Greece. So we're gonna be traveling all the way to the tiny island of Kos, Greece. It's K-O-S, I think you pronounce it Kos. At any rate, let's take a look at what we've got going on. So Kos Port over in Greece. I've never been to Greece. I've always wanted to go to Greece, so I am living vicariously through this wireless design to get myself over to Greece. I received an email from a gentleman named, oh boy, should I even attempt that last name? Yeah, I'll attempt it. Demetrius Chatzidimitrius. Demetrius Chatzidimitrius. All right, I think I got it. Anyways, so Demetrius says, congratulations on your amazing videos on YouTube. Thank you, Demetrius. I would like your opinion, please, as I'm looking to add some Wi-Fi coverage on the port of the island, Google Map, Kos Port, Greece. And I would like your opinion on what to buy to be able to cover the area. Here's an image with the port shape, coverage area, distances, and the main building that I have access uh, as the main building that I will get the internet. We'll take a look at the picture in just a second. On the main building, I can put the antenna at the first floor around 15 meters height or on the roof at about 30 meters height. Now he says 15 meters and 30 meters. I think he might've meant feet because it's just from the pictures, it's definitely not 15 meters and 30 meters high. We will cover that uh, in the actual design. There is a road in front and then a ton of light labs every 10 meters that I am planning to use for my access points and the height of the items is about 15 meters. Again, it's not the light posts aren't 15 meters tall. Uh, the main goal is to provide internet to the boats there. What's your opinion on what to buy and how to do it? All right, so before we jump into this wireless design, make sure you guys like and subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. Also, make sure you follow Crosstalk Solutions on Twitter, at Crosstalk SOL. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or if you have a unique and interesting wireless design that you would like me to attempt, Put all of that down in the comments below or contact me at info at crosstalksolutions.com. Without further ado, let's hop into the COS port in Greece. So what are our needs? We need to add Wi-Fi coverage to the port, basically to service the boats that pull into that port. We're looking to give uh, the docked boats Wi-Fi and uh, Demetrius needs to know what to buy. So here's what we know. The internet terminates at a specific building and we have an access point that can go on the roof of that building. Uh, it's 30 meters height, though again, it looks more like about 15 meters. We'll see when we actually explore the area. They have access to light poles all around the port. So we're going to assume that he's going to get power as well as you know a pole to mount equipment on on whichever light poles we're going to use. Here we have an overview of the port itself. We can see uh, the main building is down here, and then we can see some measurements for about how long this is. You know, 300 or so meters is nothing for a point-to-multi-point -point deployment. We should easily be able to cover this. And I love shooting point-to-multi-point -point over water because we know it's going to be mostly clear line of sight, as is the case with this deployment. I mean, honestly, this port where he has the internet and sort of the shape of the port is really an ideal solution for point to multi-point. Okay, so let's go to Google Maps and check out the street view. Uh, and what a gorgeous place, by the way, and in Kos Port in uh, Greece. Okay, so here is our port. Uh, this is from Google Maps. You guys can see the same thing if you just Google search Kos Port Greece. And if we zoom in down here, uh, this right here by the Sitar Cocktail Bar is where the main building is. This is where he has internet. So let's go ahead and look at the street view. So we're gonna drop our little guy right down there and here we go. So let's take a quick look around. First of all, what a gorgeous place this is. Look at these ships pulled into the port. Here we can see the light posts that he's talking about. And he says that these light posts are every 10 meters. It certainly looks that way. And they're probably about 20 feet tall, which is about six meters. So let's see, here's the building where he has internet. He said he can get internet from the first floor, which is probably about 15 feet up, or he can get internet from the roof. So we're going to prefer internet from the roof in this case. And even better, if you can get it up on some sort of pole and add some ex extra height to it. So we're gonna assume that he's gonna be up at about 50 feet by the time we get to the top of this building. Now again, from this location, if we're looking down the street and looking over here to the other side of the port, 
or looking over here to the other side of the port, we've got very, very clear line of sight for wherever we want to shoot our wireless connections. And then, you know, again, these poles are also ideal because you can have a receiving antenna for the point to multipoint. You can also have, you know, a, an access point for your clients to get connectivity. Okay, so let's back out of here for a second. And now let's look at this whole setup in AirLink. So we are now at link.ui.com. And here's what we've done. So the way that I have set this up is sort of back to back point to multi-point antennas. Now, the reason that I did back to back, I did two 90 degree antennas, basically back to back where the side of the 90 degree um, angle, if I zoom way out, you can see where this angle goes right here. But basically the side of the angle for both of these is going right down the center of the mouth of the port. Okay, so there's one. And then here's the second one. You can see the angle on the second one. So the second one's blasting out that way. In reality, you can probably, or you probably would want to actually overlap them just a little bit. Okay, but just for ease of this document, uh, you know, for a quick design, this is not something he's hiring me for, right? So we're not gonna get super detailed uh, into, the, uh, into the fine details of the deployment. We're just gonna do a nice, good overview. And so the, for the purposes of our overview, two 90 degree sectors, uh, pointing out, basically sharing this area to make 180 degrees of coverage is what we're gonna go with. Now, why wouldn't you want to do one access point with 120 degrees coverage? Well, because 120 degrees from this point is basically just gonna skirt both sides of the port here. And on the outer edges of a sector antenna is where you have the weakest signal, okay? So we don't wanna put a 120 in there, even though technically it looks like it would cover at 120 degrees, we want to make sure that we have the strongest signal. And in order to do that, we're gonna use two 90 degree sectors, uh, sort of back to back, or not really back to back, but side to side. So we've got some 90 degree sectors. It's absolutely going to cover everything down here. And at each station side, and we'll get into the full network infrastructure in just a moment, but at each station side, so here's one here, uh, we're basically gonna have a nano beam AC Gen 2. Okay, so we've got a, the access point is a rocket prism, rocket 5AC prism Gen 2. And I'm using, again, the AM5G20-90 sector antenna. And on the station side, we've got nano beams. So nano beam 5AC Gen 2, I'm using a 40 megahertz channel width. And it estimates that, you know, something with super clear line of sight is gonna get about 300 megabits. Now, in reality, I would actually expect something like 150 to 200 megabits, uh, but that's gonna be more than sufficient for this deployment, right? So each of these antennas, and I, by the way, I don't know what speed his internet is, each of these antennas can do, even if it was doing 100 to 150 megabits for each antenna, that's plenty to cover, uh, you know, to, to give Wi-Fi basically to the boats that are sitting in the port and maybe to, you know, people walking around the port, things like that. So. We're gonna spread them out. We've got one here. This is Northwest one. So I named my antennas uh, point to multipoint Northwest and point to multipoint Northeast. So on point to multipoint Northwest, we've got one, two, three, four, and then optionally, I have a fifth one way back here. Though admittedly, if we look at the uh, Google Maps, like if I drop my little guy over here for street view, oh, come on. God, look at that boat, holy mackerel. If I drop my guy back here, there's not really a great place to put an antenna, like the light posts stop around this corner here. But, you know, maybe you could get it on this post or maybe you could get one up on top of, uh, you know, this tower right here. It looks like that's some sort of radio station or something like that. So you could probably figure out a place to get another access point over here. Uh, so I added it anyways, even though we're not sure, exactly sure if he's going to be using that one. Okay, looking at our northeast point to multipoint, we have one right in front of where the access points are. Then we have another one a little bit further down, northeast two, northeast three, and then if we zoom out, we've got northeast four way over here. Now you might be saying, Chris, what about this stretch right in here? Well, unfortunately, there's just no good place to put your 
station side antennas in this entire stretch. And we'll look at the coverage map for the access points in just a moment, but look at this. Let's go back to our Google Maps. This is some sort of ruins or something. Like this is super cool. Whatever's on this island, you can drop the guy in here. Oh, come here. There we go. And here we can see that this is like some sort of, you know, old fort or something, some sort of old building. Very, very cool. Let's go back out and drop our guy where we can actually see the street. I think there's a good view right here. Yeah. So, okay, so look at the outside of this wall, right? You obviously, this is a an ancient structure. You're not going to be putting access points and station side antennas on that structure. Whoa, where, where did this guy go? <laughs> and then what we have here are just these light posts. Now, the problem with these light posts is that they are too small, right? You can almost like reach up and grab. You can't put a receiving antenna on top. There's just no good way to mount it. And if you put it down here with an access point, it's within hand's reach. Anyone could just walk by and take it right off of that pole. So you can't use any of the poles in this area. So God, look at that yacht. Holy mackerel. So all we have, we don't have anything along this entire stretch where we can put any of the antennas. And honestly, it might not be that bad. So let's go ahead and back out for a second. And that's basically this whole stretch right here because the last uh, basically power pole that we have the ability to use is right around this area right here. So if you look at our uh, link planner, we can see that I do have one right there. That's the Northeast 3 station uh, antenna. And then I did put one up here uh, where I just assumed that we could maybe put it on this building right here. All right, here's the back side. So here you can see where that building goes. So there's that building right there. So you could probably get an antenna on that building uh, or maybe on one of these other poles. Like these poles here are plenty tall enough for that kind of stuff. All right, so let's look at, so there's our link planner. Now, every single one of these links has perfect line of sight, no sort of obstructions whatsoever. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous as far as what we would want to see. Now, I've got the installation height on the access point at 20 meters. Uh, that's assuming that we can get it on the roof of that building. 20 meters, I think, is about 50 feet. And then we've got the Nanobeam AC, uh, 5AC Gen 2s, the station side antennas, at 6 meters, which is, uh, I think, just about 12 or 15 feet. Okay, now let's pop over to the Unified Design Center. The access points that I'm going for, for client connectivity, are the UAP ACM Pros. And let's look at the coverage of the UAP ACM Pros. Look at that, just absolutely gorgeous. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz coverage, and you can see the sort of strength of the access points where you just basically want the sort of orange uh, strength just to kind of be touching each other for each one of these. So this is basically perfect placement around the port, and you can see that even one over here is gonna be great. Now, for that stretch where we can't put any access points, 2.4 gigahertz might actually still work just fine. Uh, it is, It does have coverage, although the coverage is fairly weak uh, at that spot, but you're down here in the like, you know, minus 60 to minus 70 uh, coverage, which again is okay, but it should still work, at least in 2.4 gigahertz. If we flip it over to five gigahertz, we can see that the coverage is going to be a lot smaller and we probably won't be able to get five gigahertz coverage on this one stretch where we can't put any access points. But that's okay. Uh, mostly we only care about the 2.4 gigahertz coverage because if the point of this is for internet, uh, is servicing internet to the boats that are in the port, we're gonna want 2.4 gigahertz anyways because it has better penetration through the actual boats themselves for the people that are picking up the wireless. It's gonna have better penetration than the five gigahertz anyways. So we're mostly focused on how can we get good 2.4 gigahertz coverage to this area, which looks like this is absolutely perfect coverage. All right, so how are we pulling this off? There we go, okay, so uh, getting myself out of the way here, here is our infrastructure, okay? So we have our internet coming in. This is what I'm going to do for the firewall. I've got this NetGate SG3100, and we'll explain all of this equipment on the next slides. Then we have the US8150 watt switch, a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Those are all gonna push out to two Rocket AC Prism Gen 2s. We've got the one that's facing Northwest and the one that's facing Northeast. 
So those are going to be connected to the um, 90 degree uh, five, uh, 5G sector antennas, which are then uh, shooting signal over to uh, basically this setup here. And then we're just going to keep replicating this same setup at every light pole. So we've got the Nanobeam AC Gen 2, we've got the UAP ACM Pro, and then we've got this little Altelix box, which is essentially a small enclosure where we can put, you know, two PoE injectors that are sort of piggybacked together. You could also do a little small switch if you want, but, um, you know, this is powered by 24 volt passive, the Nanobeam is powered by 24 volt passive, and the UAP ACM is 802.3 AF. So it's better, in my opinion, just to use the included PoE injectors and sort of just piggyback them together inside this box with whatever power you're going to be supplying to those, uh, those two PoE injectors. All right, so moving on, here we have our firewall and LAN infrastructure. Now, this gentleman did not tell me if they have any existing equipment, if they have other stuff that they need to connect. So I'm just making assumptions that we're only going to be powering up the equipment locally, like so the cloud key, and then those two rocket ACs, and then a few extra ports for whatever else you know you might need. So we've got the, the SG3100, which is a great little firewall, 399 bucks. It'll do 2.4 gig, uh, gigabit uh, wire speed for the firewall and 3.6 gigabits uh, L3 switching inside that device. It's plenty powerful for whatever internet connection they might throw at it. Then we've got our US8 150 watt switch. Again, the reason I chose this switch is because it is capable of powering 24 volt passive devices such as the Rocket AC uh, Prism Gen 2s and 802.3 AF capable devices such as the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Now the reason that, oh, and it says Cloud Key Gen 2, but this is actually the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus the reason that I went for the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus is because the, the difference in price between the Cloud Key non plus version and the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus is like $18, right? And what you get with the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus is a one terabyte hard drive with the ability to add cameras in the future if you want them. So while I'm not putting any cameras in now, you might want to put a camera up on the pole you know, where those sector antennas are, right? Where the, where the sector access points are, just to sort of keep eye on them in case, you know, anyone comes up there and starts messing with them. And so for an extra 18 bucks, it's worth it to have the ability to add cameras if you need them. I mostly only sell the Gen 2 Pluses because of that same reason. It's worth less, less than 20 bucks so that you could potentially upgrade and use Protect in the future. Okay, so now let's take a look at our access points. Uh, here we have the Rocket AC Prism Gen 2. That's a $219 access point. It features GPS sync. And the reason that we want GPS sync is because we're going to have two of these devices on a pole right next to each other like this. Okay, And so GPS sync means they will help keep in synchronization where packets are basically synchronized using the GPS uh, the GPS antenna that's part of the Rocket AC Prism, and it just helps helps keep everything flowing really, really nicely. Uh, these are capable of doing 500 plus megabits. Um, of course, we're not actually going to be doing 500 plus megabits. Uh, that's if you're using an 80 gigahertz channel width. We're going with a 40 gigahertz channel width. I would expect to see somewhere between 150 to 200, maybe 250 megabits per second uh, to each station, if we're lucky. But again, 100 to 150 megabits to each station is more than sufficient for this deployment. Then we have the sector antenna. This is a 90 degree 2x2 MIMO AM 5G20-90. It's a big old sector antenna. So these things are pretty large. Uh, and then because it's a big old sector antenna, I have the RF Armor UCM4T. It's a 4x90 degree mount uh, for these sector antennas. So basically you can have four of these, you know, four 90 degree antennas pointing in each, you know, of the four sort of northwest, southeast directions, right? Uh, in this case, we're only going to be using two of them, but you could always add on more if you also wanted to provide coverage, like WISP coverage, you know, behind this port to, you know, residences or businesses or whatever. You have that option, and uh, they don't really make one that just has two together in, you know, two 90 degrees side by side. So this is a nice one, a nice mount for a pole, again, RF Armor, UCM4T, 
it works really, really well. Let me get back to that picture. So again, this is a really nice mount here because you can just put each sector, you know, one here, one here, uh, and they will be sort of perfectly aligned 90 degrees and 90 degrees to make a full 180 degrees coverage. Here's an optional add-on that I am throwing in. So since we're using the RF Armor mount, we are also going to be doing this RF Armor USK 9025X for a hundred bucks. Uh, this is basically an aluminum shield for the sector antennas that makes sure that they don't bleed any RF behind or to the sides, and it's gonna help reduce um, interference between the two sector antennas that we have side by side. In addition to reducing interference, it protects the sector antennas from some of the elements. I mean, this is a port. I assume that they probably get their fair amount of you know inclement weather and stuff. So this will protect not only the sector antennas themselves, but it completely encases the rocket prism in a like marine grade aluminum casing where it's completely sealed up inside of there uh, so that you don't have to worry about you know water rain hitting the and the access point itself or the connectors on the access point and additionally they make this ugah 234 for 10 bucks it's an additional piece that uh, the GPS antenna from the Rocket Prism fits into that also attaches to this same RF armor case. All right, so for each station side, we are going for this small Altelex NEMA enclosure. It's 14 inches by 11 inches by five inches, about 50 bucks. Interior space is uh, basically a foot by eight inches by four inches. So plenty of space for like power, and then two PoE injectors, right? That's all we're gonna be putting in here. And then of course some wiring and whatnot. Um, then the station side antenna is gonna be the Nanobeam AC Gen 2 at 89 bucks. And then the Unify Mesh Pro access points, which if you buy them in the five pack, so they need nine of them total, but we're gonna buy 10 of them because buying 10, buying two five packs of the Unify Mesh Pro access points is cheaper than buying 10 individual UAPACM Pro units, right? It's actually cheaper by a little bit, by like 20 bucks or something. So it's nice to just get two five packs. That way you always have a spare Unify Mesh Pro access point uh, for even a little bit cheaper than if you just bought nine um, you know, separate units. And finally, let's take a look at our pricing. Here we can see the NetGate SG3100 at 399. We got the Unify switch at about 200 bucks, CloudKey Gen 2 Plus at 190. Two of the Rocket AC prisms at 438, 90 degree sector antenna, 376. We've got all the RF element stuff for about just close to $400. Uh, we have nine of those NEMA enclosures for 450. We've got nine of the Nanobeam AC Gen 2s for eight, just about 800 bucks. And then we've got the two five packs of UA Unify Mesh Pro access points for a grand total of $4,956 for this particular uh, Unify deployment. Uni well, not just Unify, but Unify Air Max RF Elements uh, NetGate deployment, right? So this is a really, really nice setup. I think it's gonna work perfectly fine Let's take another quick look at it here. Yeah, we love this. And if you get, if you want me to come out to cost Greece to install this, as soon as us Americans are allowed to leave the country again, please have me out to do this. I would love to come out here. Holy moly, look at this place. <laughs> it just looks gorgeous. Uh, and then let's take a look at the design center again. Beautiful. So that's gonna provide you, Demetrius, with all of the coverage that you need for cost port Greece. All right, that's gonna do it for this wireless design. What did I do wrong? Do you guys have anything else that you would have done differently? Put that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.